This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S-1 Ison and WTF NASA. Seriously, bro. Part 18, 10,000 year timeline. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Comet Ison, or as NASA first described it, the Comet of the Century, when they discovered it in September of 2012, and what I'm calling possibly the greatest comet of all time. Comet Ison is a total drama queen. How much of a drama queen is she? Just as the story is really starting to heat up, she vanishes. I mean, we know where she is, but she's disappeared behind the sun. So she has gone from pretty much the middle of June to the end of August, maybe early September. Gone for a month, so who knows what can happen in a month. NASA's already starting to hint that she's already started to break up, um, which, you know, might be covering their butt there. CYA, cover your ass by saying that if it comes around and if Earth-based pseudo-astronomy and normal amateur astronomers will see that it has two bodies, they can say, oh, hey, it broke up. <laughs> You know, NASA not only put the Hubble on it for multiple photographs. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, NASA. NASA has now put out a timeline, which is great. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. But the thing is about this timeline is they said 10,000 years ago. They put a date on it. Like, all right, yeah, this thing is 10,000 years old. Or it started its journey towards Earth 10,000 years ago. Which is weird, man. Like, all right, here's the deal. How do they know? Like, 10,000 years it only took ice in basically one year to cross over our entire solar system. I think it's only taken like two or three months for it to go from Jupiter to Mars. And it's only taken like three or four months to go from Mars to the sun. So if it been on a 10,000 year journey, where the hell did it come from, man? Like they keep saying, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It came from outside of the Oort cloud. Well, I thought the very edge of the Oort cloud was kind of empty. Sometimes they say outer space is crowded with asteroids and space debris. And sometimes they're like, no, it's actually asteroid belt. All asteroids are like 10,000 miles apart from each other. So which is it, man? If it was hopping along in some other passage what caused it to make a 10,000 year journey towards the sun that is important to know and like in the article NASA how can you say that it's spewing water and then say you can't wait to take a look at it because then you'll see what it's made of that is kind of contradictory you know what I'm saying I don't know if you guys know that but it's true okay yeah and they're putting up some super space balloon that's gonna measure it in infrared and on the ultraviolet spectrums which is interesting and then they got some super fast reaction project where they're gonna measure it in other ways so as you can see with all this information Ison still could be the story of 2013 so by me having been doing all these episodes man I'm not a dumbass you know I mean I may act like a dumbass sometimes and I may make mistakes but I ain't no dummy you know what I'm saying like this is a fascinating object this thing will be cool in some way. And every step of the way, it's gotten more interesting and more puzzling and more bizarre. We've only got more questions. You know what I'm saying? I, I know you know what I'm saying because this has to be at least minute four of the video. And if you're still here, that means you're listening. And I appreciate it. I really do. I wouldn't work as hard at these videos if you guys didn't like them and enjoy learning along with me. All right? Kick ass. Now let's get to some more stuff. Uh, what? Huh? Come on, come on, come on. Get happy now. Oh, yeah. Sidebar, NASA timeline, a dangerous journey. A comet's journey is perilous and violent. Okay, if it's one year journey across the solar system was perilous and violent, how were the other 9,999 years of this journey? A breezy, easy cakewalk? I like cake and walking. Radiation pressure? Radiation pressure could cause Ison to start breaking apart. Wait a second, if Ison is traveling at 58,000 miles per hour and has been traveling for 10,000 years, and the Voyager has been traveling at 38,000 miles per hour for 35 years, and the Voyager has almost each the end of the heliosphere. Isn't the OART cloud based upon the heliosphere? So that I wouldn't think the OART cloud would, would extend beyond the sun's gravitational field or gravitational pull. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you, right? You know, so doesn't that mean the OART cloud is 10, uh, uh, too much math. My brain just loaded. Too much math. My brain just ex loaded 10,000 years. Man, I'm pretty pleased with cherries on top. See the data, math, and scientific papers that led to this approximate conclusion. 10,000 years equals X plus Y. Hey, if you put another bar over that equal sign, it looks like sexy. <laughs> I could use a date. I could use a date. Okay, seriously, bro. What is the X and the Y? Or just the X? I'd like to know. Yeah, I tried to figure out the math, find the math, but I failed. I don't like to fail, man. And for the record, I think NASA's copying me a couple episodes ago. I put a timeline up and, and then they put a timeline 
up. So I, I'm glad you guys are following along, NASA. Yeah, I mean, if you guys have been watching these episodes, you've known that I've been fully and utterly fascinated by its unknown origin. So a 10,000 year marker should give us a better idea of where it came from. We figure out the direction, right, right? Where did it come from, man? I mean, 10,000 years is a long time. And if it only took one year to cross pretty much our entire solar system, I mean, couldn't it have come from another solar system or star system? You know, like, couldn't it have come from another star system? That's what I'd like to know. This is this is pretty fascinating. Ison gets cooler every day. I mean, I'm wondering, Ison, how dramatic can you get? And you know, Ison by vanishing, sometimes the best way to grow interest is to just disappear completely. The memory of you grows, people start to miss you, and then they start to wonder, and the legend grows. And such is the way Ison goes. It's gone, hidden relative to the sun. Now only God and NASA know what's going on. God help us all. Soon, the end of August, early September, Ison shall break on through to the other side. Yeah, break on through to the other side. Oh yeah. And it appears the mainstream media has officially finally showed up to our astonishers party. Yeah, it's true. We got comma ice and articles all over the place. Yahoo even had one on its front page. We got NBC, we got LA Times, the MSM is here. So let's be nice to them. Ha ha ha. Uh, one thing I did think was funny is about a week ago, a, a stir was caused because on catholic.org, they posted an article saying Comet Ison is brightening fast. And when you click on the article, it, it has a little article and it's got a news story from like some podunk channel 13 in South Carolina talking about Comet Ison could be Comet of the Century. Oh, really? It was like 48 episodes ago. Just kidding. 18, 17, whatever. But that's so... You know, it's like, what they call this on the internet is clickbaiting, where they bait you to click on it, and then there's nothing there, whatever they advertise. And, and I think that's weird that Catholic.org would clickbait you, because there's no information there saying that Comet Ison really is brightening behind the sun. Nobody knows, right? Other than NASA, and unless NASA has some inside information, you know, and only shared it with the Catholic, that'd be weird. Well, I guess I, I shouldn't say too much because I'm still proud of uh, the Catholics, you know, for realizing that the solar system does not revolve around Earth anymore. Proud of them for that, you know what I'm saying? Then putting people in Iron Maidens and bleeding them to death, you know, I guess as long as you guys aren't doing that, I'll stay happy with you and I won't complain that much. All right, so yeah, they're clickbaiting the other day, yesterday, sidebar, yesterday, I saw a double rainbow. That means I'm gonna get to kiss one or two pretty girls soon. That is good news. All right. Too much math, my boy.